She was the powerhouse vocalist whose voice shattered glass ceilings in rock music. But behind the scenes, Ann Wilson's battles were just beginning. Addiction, toxic relationships, and a vicious assault that nearly ended her iconic career. This is the untold story of the heart front woman you never knew. Growing up in a military family, the sisters were constantly uprooted as their father's career took them across the globe. Music became their sole constant. On Sundays, their home echoed with everything from opera to Judy Garland as their father conducted an imaginary orchestra. It was in this emotionally turbulent environment that Anne first discovered her pipes. A shy girl plagued by a severe stutter, she found her voice through singing. When Hart finally coalesced in the early 70s, the stage was set for Anne's legend. With her earth-shattering vocals and Nancy's complimentary melodies, the Wilson sisters crafted a sound that obliterated the idea of what a rock band should be. This was no Angel City bubblegum pop. This was molten hard rock forged in the fires of Led Zeppelin and Yes. But even as their fame exploded, darkness loomed. While touring behind 1976's Dreamboat Annie, 24-year-old Anne fell into a cycle of hard partying and torrid affairs, including a relationship with Hart's abusive manager. By her own admission, she spiraled into addictions to alcohol, cocaine, and diet pills as the loneliness of life on the road consumed her. I was lost, Wilson said years later. There was so much chaos with being constantly moved around as a kid, I never felt at home anywhere. The road became my dysfunctional home. Her drug and alcohol abuse grew so severe that by the late 70s, Anne's once immortal voice began to deteriorate rapidly. But rock bottom didn't hit until a fateful night in 1980. After a heart performance in Cincinnati, a drink and drug-fueled Anne violently assaulted two staff members at the group's hotel. She was arrested and jailed on charges of assault, criminal damage, and disorderly conduct while intoxicated. For the first time, her demons had been exposed to the world. Rattled to her core by the arrest, Anne made a desperate attempt to get clean, but her methods were far from orthodox. In a last-ditch effort to kick her addictions, she fell under the sway of a controversial psychiatrist peddling a fringe form of cult deprogramming. The experience was nothing short of harrowing, laying fresh trauma upon Anne's already fractured psyche. The voice that once seemed indestructible, a primal force of nature, had been reduced to a mere specter of its former glory. As Nancy's signature guitar riffs propelled Hart's chart-topping 80s hits, Anne found herself struggling to keep pace, her once crystalline vocals now ragged and frayed. By the time the decade drew to a close, Anne had been all but exiled to the sidelines of her own band, a fallen rock goddess grappling with her own mortality. But Anne Wilson's untold story was about to take another dramatic turn, one that reaffirmed her status as one of rock's most indomitable front women. A massive personal reinvention was on the horizon, setting the stage for a resurrection that rivaled her early triumphs. As the 1990s dawned, Anne Wilson stood at a career crossroads. Her once celestial vocals had been ravaged by decades of hard living and substance abuse. Hart's popularity had waned as hair metal and grunge took over. The rock goddess was in a very human crisis, but Anne was about to prove her resilience by pulling off one of the greatest reinventions in music history. It started with her finally admitting she needed help. In 1992, Anne checked into an intensive rehab program in Boston to treat alcoholism, drug addiction, and a newly developed eating disorder. Overcoming her inner demons required hitting psychological bedrock first. As part of her treatment, therapists had Anne confront the traumatic childhood that had set the stage for her dysfunctional coping mechanisms. The pain caused by constantly being uprooted as a kid, it followed me everywhere, she later said. I had to learn that music couldn't keep filling that gaping void. Emerging from rehab newly sober, Anne charted an unexpected solo path while Hart went on hiatus. In 1997, she made an underrated detour by forming The Lovemongers, an eclectic blues gospel side project that showcased her still formidable chops. But Anne's first real solo statement came in 2007 with Hope and Glory, a revelatory folk rock song cycle it featured high-profile collaborators like Elton John and Winona Judd, and, more importantly, reintroduced Anne as a magnetic vocalist and lyricist. Reviews glowed over her rediscovered range and creative spark. As her career renaissance took flight, however, Anne's personal life was nearly derailed yet again by another shattering incident with echoes of her past trauma. 
In a shocking turn of events, Anne's new husband Dean brutally lashed out at Nancy's teenage sons on Hart's 2016 tour, viciously assaulting them over something as trivial as an open RV door. What was meant to be a triumphant return quickly devolved into a maelstrom of chaos, accusations, and legal fallout that threatened to tear the Wilson clan apart. For Anne, the nauseating echoes of her own turbulent upbringing came roaring back with a vengeance. I felt like I was that scared little kid again, she admitted, watching everything I loved be torn apart. In the wake of her husband's violent outburst, Anne Wilson's hard-won sobriety was pushed to its limits. Her lifelong quest for inner peace and stability seemed forever elusive, but through intensive therapy, she not only kept her decades-long commitment to being clean, but she also managed to heal old family wounds. The first step was addressing the unresolved trauma between her and Nancy. While the pair's bond had frayed over the years due to personal tensions, the 2016 incident exposed deeper scars that dated back to their rootless, volatile childhood. We were always so close as kids because our family kept moving around. Music was our shared sanctuary, Nancy later reflected. But when this horrible thing happened, all those old hurts from when we were little just came flooding back. Through family counseling, the Wilson sisters confronted the cyclical nature of their clan's dysfunction. Born into a household where their marine father cycled between authoritarian rages and depressive funks, the pair had normalized emotional volatility. It was a pattern they struggled to escape, even decades into adulthood. But breaking that cycle allowed Anne to rededicate herself to her deepest passion, singing. With her home life back on steady ground and her head clear of addiction, she set about the monumental task of rebuilding her voice from the ground up. Step by painful step, Anne relearned the once effortless techniques that produced her volcanic prime vocals. She adopted a regimen of breathing exercises, vocal warm-ups, and functional workout routines that treated her entire body as an instrument. It was the physical and spiritual reconstruction of a rock icon. By 2019, the work had paid off in spectacular fashion as Hart reunited for the road. Night after night, Anne's stratospheric howls and gymnastic melisma stunned crowds and critics alike. The magic was back, and it was more powerful than ever before. Reviews gushed over Anne's seemingly ageless ability to channel the full tornado force of her prime. At 69 years old, she had reclaimed her power and prowess through sheer force of will. But her untold journey of redemption, rebirth, and reclamation was just beginning. The story was about to take one final turn that would cement her status as a true survivor. An inspiration for the ages. For Anne Wilson, sobriety represented more than just getting clean. It was a spiritual awakening that allowed her to finally find the inner peace that had eluded her for decades. Her newfound self-acceptance gave her the courage to dream bigger than ever before. In 2009, two years after quitting alcohol and rededicating herself to music, Anne decided to expand her family through adoption. At 59 years old, she became a first-time mother to Marie and Dustin, joining her younger sister Nancy's family. Having children was something I never thought I'd get to experience, she said through tears. For so many years, I was just trying to survive, to outrun my own pain and darkness. Suddenly, I had these two beautiful lives to care for, and all that mattered was being there for them. Motherhood marked the start of an entirely new chapter of personal tranquility for Anne. Gone were the hard partying, self-destructive tendencies that had threatened to derail her career time and time again. She was sober, stable, and suffused with creative energy. It was the perfect mind space to rededicate herself to the thing she loved most, heart. In 2012, Anne and Nancy released their joint autobiography, Kicking and Dreaming, which pulled back the curtain on the band's turbulent history. But more importantly, it exercised lingering personal demons and paved the way for the biggest comeback of their career. A high-profile reunion tour and long-overdue induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. On that fateful night in 2013, the Wilson sisters took the stage in Cleveland to tear through their seminal hard rock anthems. To anyone who witnessed and summoned the hurricane force vocals of her 1970s heyday, it was the shocking completion of an absolutely improbable journey back from the brink. The once wounded vocal prodigy had clawed her way back to the top through resilience, resolve, and an entirely rebuilt instrument. When Anne and Nancy finally experienced their coronation by being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's Class of 2013, it marked the symbolic capping achievement of two incredible reinvention stories. As Anne took the podium in Cleveland that night, 
she eloquently laid bare the harsh misogynist undertones that had delayed the band's long overdue recognition. This is weird, being celebrated for hitting the same wall Christianity hit with the Inquisition, she said, referencing the uphill battle faced by all female trailblazers. We got lots of kids through the doors, though, and a few windows. Hart's path to the Rock Hall was littered with the kind of industry obstacles Anne and Nancy overcame through sheer tenacity and fighting spirits. For the first decade of their careers, record labels attempted to undermine them by distorting their promo shots, underselling albums and dismissing their creative counsel. All because they were unapologetically two women who dared to not only front a hard rock band, but to write, arrange, and call the shots as equal creative partners. For Anne in particular, Hart's induction represented the completion of a staggering personal arc. The once meek singer who stuttered her way through early interviews now commanded arena crowds with the self-assured presence of someone who endured and overcame every possible battle. When Hart's reunion tour rolled through Anne's hometown of Seattle in 2013, the Seattle Times reveled in the surreal sight of a conquering hero taking the stage at Key Arena while being the same polite, almost shy young woman she'd been when she'd left town to conquer the world. And yet, anyone familiar with Ann Wilson's real, untold story knows she was anything but shy. She was a bona fide survivor who stared down industry prejudice, personal trauma, substance abuse, and near-career destruction to achieve victory on her own terms. The Rock Hall coronation only represented the opening salvo in Anne's next and perhaps greatest act as an emboldened elder stateswoman. At 63 years old, she was in the kind of vocal prime that most singers can only dream of, with her most transcendent performances still ahead of her. When Hart's long-awaited comeback tour finally commenced in 2019, Anne took the stage reborn as an indomitable force of nature. Her vocal performances harkened back to her legendary prime, while unveiling a level of technical control, stamina, and emotional resonance she'd never sung with before. Music critics were left gobsmacked at the sight of a 60-something singer, defying every possible vocal convention with acrobatics that would fell performers a third her age. The Seattle Times hailed her constant shower of spontaneous melisma, while Rolling Stone called her voice downright scary in its power. Night after night, city after city, Ann Wilson reaffirmed why she was one of the greatest vocalists in rock history. In the process, she completed a decades-long journey of overcoming inner darkness, personal demons, and industry double standards, now completely emancipated. By the time she reached her 70s, Ann Wilson had cemented her status as an empowered feminist icon, the proverbial woman who could not be contained. Her 50-plus year career has traced an upward arc of battling misogyny, discovering her singular voice, repeatedly hitting rock bottom and heroically rising back up with a deeper well of strength each time. Looking back on Hart's early 70s rise from bar band obscurity to arena headliners, Anne once reflected that even as their fame exploded, there was a blatant systemic attempt by the old music industry guards to undermine their impact. There was just this constant drumbeat to make it all seem smaller, even as we were selling out shows, she said. Hart was lumped in with lightweight, disposable pop, and our artistic ambitions were diminished. There was always this sense that we were cute girls having a little moment. Today, as she continues performing well into her 70s, Ann Wilson has defied every conceivable limitation placed on female performers, particularly in rock. With stamina and pipes that would shame singers a third her age, she remains an immortal force of nature, still scaling vertiginous vocal peaks each night, even as most of her contemporaries have long retired or traded on nostalgia. If you liked this video, make sure to watch more video on our channel in the end screen about the beautiful ladies of yesteryear.